What are bikes for? Are they child's toys, sport and recreational vehicles, or everyday transportation? By the end of this talk, I'm sure you'll have an answer. Welcome to the Cruiser Racer Channel. I'm Rebel Lion of the Electron Rebels Bike Club, and this is Bike Talk. Bike Talk is a personal blog for electric bike enthusiasts. Here we share with you news about the e-bike industry and new technology. We also feature electric cruiser and cafe racer brands. And we specifically highlight custom and DIY electric bikes. If this channel appeals to you and you like what we like too, please click like and subscribe. Now let's get to the show. According to the Online Britannica, globally there are twice as many bicycles as there are automobiles. Bikes are outselling automobiles three to one. Britannica also cites that in countries such as the Netherlands, Denmark, and Japan, cycling is encouraged for shopping and commuting. While in the US, bike paths have been constructed in many parts of the country, but are only encouraged as an alternative to automobiles. My question is, if bicycles are outnumbering automobiles around the world, including in the US, then why is it that the U.S. only promotes using bicycles as an alternative to cars? Let me explain. <music> Greetings enthusiasts and welcome to the channel. I'm Rebel Lion of the Electron Rebels, the Grand Admiral, and this is Bike Talk, the personal vlog of an electric bike enthusiast. In 1919, streetcars and trains dominated travel in the U.S. And even though there were automobiles in the early 20th century, cars were not yet affordable for all. The most used form of personal transportation at that time was the bicycle. And as the Roaring Twenties approached, automobiles became more affordable. By the 1930s, more than half of U.S. families owned an automobile. And after the Second World War, the U.S. became a very rich country. And with the construction of the highway system, the rest is history. After the 1920s and 30s, automobiles made bicycles nearly obsolete. And during that era of bicycle production, bikes weighed around 60 pounds, but were styled like motorcycles. It was this style of bike that was most appealing to children. But it wasn't just children that this style was appealing to. The bicycles of the 1920s are my favorite style of bike. During World War II, American soldiers took notice of European bikes, which had lighter frames and gears. It was during the 1950s and 60s when teenagers developed a fad for this Euro design. And from the new interest, the Schwinn Stingray became largely sought after. The bikes of that era were most known for their small wheels, banana-shaped saddle, and long handlebars. True beauties if you ask me. By 1968, this style of bike made up 75% of US bike sales. Because automobiles became more and more affordable to adults in the US, bicycles continued to be utilized mostly by children. This is how they became regarded as children's toys. During the 1970s, with the rise of the 10-speed cycle, cyclists began switching from utility bikes to road bikes. It was the oil embargo of 1974 that gave bikes a boost amongst adult cyclists, but quickly took a dive in 1975, sending many companies in the U.S. into bankruptcy. After the events of the oil and barge charge bankruptcies, Bike production migrated overseas to Japan and Taiwan, which is where we all get our bikes from today. It wouldn't be fair to say that there hasn't been many interesting developments in bicycles from the 1970s until the present day. The mountain bike was a huge success in the 80s, just as the BMX bike was in the 70s and 90s. And as years pass, more types of bikes, such as the Touring and Hybrid, became available. We interrupt this program for a word from our sponsor. 
Today's sponsor is Cruiser Racer. Cruiser Racer is more than just a channel on YouTube. It is an entire platform based on electric bike building and enthusiasm. The first way you can help support this channel is by liking this video and subscribing. And if you'd like to go a little further, check out our store on Teesprings. In the store, you'll find eye-popping and authentic designs from the Cruiser Racer line and the Electron Rebels. This is a great way to support this entire platform and help us grow. So head on over to the store and check out our designs today. Now back to the show. Bike frames were getting lighter with the advances of metal technology, but what they were able to accomplish with lighter materials allowed style to take a back seat. In my opinion, the bikes of the 90s and early 2000s lacked a fashionable appeal. Bikes today fit in six categories, with the exception of the recumbent and trike. The utility bikes are used by adults and children for short trips. Touring bikes, which are used for self-contained cycling, pleasure, or adventure with the addition of panniers. Road racing bikes, which people use for everyday commuting, but are designed for special racing events such as the Tour de France. Mountain bikes, which many of us have and use today, are designed for riding narrow dirt trails. Hybrid bikes are a cross between a mountain bike and road racing bike and are generally used for light recreation and urban commuting. BMX bikes are a spin-off from motocross designed to race on dirt bike tracks with the ability to perform tight turns, berms, jumps, and wheelies BMXs are generally used for freestyle riding and acrobatics. Out of all of the six bikes, the only bike designed for everyday use and commuting is the hybrid. And unfortunately, there aren't too many hybrids that are attractive to the eye. At least from my perspective, it's no wonder why bikes have not been taken seriously in the West. In the US, bikes are looked upon as children's toys, sports, and recreational vehicles, but not everyday transportation. But that is changing, and it will continue to change with the advance of the electric bike. The first e-bike was introduced to the world by Yamaha in 1989, and when Yamaha introduced the pedal assist system in 1993, production began to boom. From 1993 to 2004, electric bike production was up 35%, and in 1995, standard bike production began to decrease from its peak of 107 million units. In 1997, Lee Iacocca, an auto industry executive best known for the development of the Ford Mustang, founded a company called EV Global Motors. EV Global produced an e-bike called e-bike SX. This was an early attempt to popularize electric bikes in the U.S. Yet, it didn't take off, in the U.S. at least. However, overseas, the industry was beginning to gain its footing in a quickly developing country. And by 2007, electric bikes made up 10 to 20 percent of all two-wheel vehicles sold in major Chinese cities. China was the catalyst of electric bikes moving forward. Although other developers did make earlier attempts, such as the 1895 patent by American Ogden Bolton Jr. and the patent from Philip Simplex of Germany in 1932. With all that said, I gather that bicycles in general won't be considered a true commuting or transportation vessel until electric bikes are perfected, which I think isn't too far off from today. As I said, when it comes to electric bikes, China takes the lead. Chinese sales of electric bikes went from 56,000 in 1998 to over 21 million in 2008. By 2010, there were 120 million e-bikes sold in China. China is the world's manufacturer of electric bikes. In India, the first pedal assisted bicycle was introduced in 1993, but adoption was slow. And given the population of India, one would think that sales would boom upon arrival, but that wasn't the case. 
India was not yet developing in 1993, and the vast population was not yet able to afford electric bikes. India would eventually begin to buy more e-bikes in 2020 when a mid-drive motor appeared with a range of 100 kilometers or 62 miles per charge. The new e-bike gave citizens an option to use a pillion, a secondary pad, seat, or cushion that extends the saddle, allowing for more than one passenger. The mid-drive motor made hills, off-road, and city riding easier. In the Netherlands, where bicycles are used more than automobiles, mainly due to the infrastructure, electric bikes are not as sought after because of the cost. By 2009, e-bikes had a 10% market share. And between 2006 and 2009, sales of electric bikes went from 40,000 units to 153,000 units. Sales are predicted to surge between 2021 and 2026, as the country saw a record number of sales in 2019. Around 420,000 electric bikes were sold, which is a 70% turnover from standard bike sales. And finally, in the U.S. by 2009, there was an estimated 200,000 electric bikes. Electric bikes were heavily favored in New York by 2012 with delivery drivers. But in 2012, when two e-bike advocates made a 4,000 mile journey from New York to San Francisco, showing U.S. cyclists that electric bikes can be a sustainable form of transportation, it was then that the market began to grow. But it wasn't until the 2020 COVID pandemic when electric bike sales in the U.S. began to explode. And this is why this channel exists today. Usually the U.S. is first to the party when it comes to advances in human mobility. But we are slow to adapt to the electric bike industry only because we cannot detach ourselves from fossil fuel. How stubborn are we to not see an opportunity to dominate yet another market only because we can't let go of a past, a dying petroleum industry. But there is still hope. The e-bike industry has been slow to catch fire in other developed and developing countries around the world due to the electric battery technology anomaly. If U.S. automakers can begin to solve this problem in the next five years, I believe the U.S. can be major players in the industry for decades to come. But that is just a fantasy for me. What do you think? Can the bicycle finally be touted as a primary form of transportation in U.S. future? Of course, the electric bike will have to be the catalyst. It will be at that point where the bicycle will not only be looked upon as a child's toy or a sport or recreational utility, but as a legitimate form of everyday transportation. Good evening. Just getting back from my day of working at the waterfront, editing some video and enjoying the beautiful day. As you saw, I'm just taking it in because I've only got about three weeks left of my free time as it has been for the last year and six months. It's been really good and I've enjoyed the time from this time for not working a regular job, a nine to five, or what I was doing before in the gig economy. It's been really refreshing to sit back and reflect on what it is that I really want to do. And if you watch the video, the last video of why you should volunteer for bike mechanics, I explained that I applied for a position with AmeriCorps to work at the bike shop that I've been volunteering at. and it went through, it's, it's gone through and I'm gonna be there 
starting August 23rd, I'll be there full time for the next 10 and a half to 11 months. And I look forward to it because with this AmeriCorps opportunity comes a grant for, you know, to further my education with bike mechanics or whatever I should choose. And as I said, I look forward to putting that money towards learning how to build bike frames at the United Bike Institute. So not only do I get to have a year of training, free training, learning bike mechanics and community organizing, I also get a chance to take my experiences and apply it to, to more bike building. And this is, it's phenomenal. I couldn't be more happy with the way things have turned out. And it's all through, I say, manifestation. I put my mind to what I wanted to do. This year was a goal for me to learn bike mechanics, better bike mechanics, and then bike building. It all fell together. And as I say, I couldn't be more happy. So with that said, I'm gonna finish up what I'm doing here, editing this video so I can put it out for you all. And I'm gonna say that's it for Bike Talk this week. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for joining. I appreciate your support. It means the world to me. And I know that as I move forward with this next year, there's gonna be more to come. The journey is gonna get even better. So. I hope to see you on Friday for an episode of The Builder's Corner. As for that, I need you all to do me a favor and stay safe and ride easy. If you'd like to be part of our purpose, mission, and our journey, please consider becoming part of the Electron Rebels Bike Club. You can find links to the club in the description below. Ride easy.